Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a video on how to design licks in the pentatonic scale. I'm Brett Papa, and today we're going to go over how to play over the chord tones or how to design melodic licks using the chord tones, which is everything. If you want a little bit more in-depth course in this too, when you're done with this video, down below in the description box is both a lesson on major pentatonic and minor pentatonic, really going deep into this whole idea. Okay, so... The first thing you have to remember is melody is key, right? We can learn the, the pentatonic scale. We'll take A minor. Let's start with the, you know, the assumption that you already know that scale. But it's just notes. It's five notes. That doesn't mean you're going to be melodic. One thing to always remember is the blues greats or you know i'm going to say 90 percent of them or 95 percent of them were singers right so they can hear melodies in their head now they may have used a box or a scale to kind of get around in but they're hearing melodies in their head now one of the easiest ways to become melodic is to start using the notes from the chords that we're playing over so we'll just take a typical one four five which is a blues progression Right, A minor, D minor, E minor, right, one chord, four chord, five chord, okay? So we'll start designing licks out of those chord shapes themselves. Now in every chord there's three notes, a root, a third, and a fifth. So if we take this scale right here, with this chord and the scale together, we have our root, our third, and our fifth. Okay, we can do it like this. Root, third, fifth. All right, so that's an A minor chord. So what we want to start to do is design our licks using some of those notes. Now we can, if we already know some licks, once you get the concept of these target notes that we're talking about, you'll be like, oh, that's why that lick works because he's hitting the root note when he bends or he's hitting the fifth, right? So let's give an example of that. Got my side man over here. Okay, so <clears throat> here's what the root sounds like over that chord. Right, here's the, fifth, uh, the third. Here's the fifth. Okay, now, each note's a different level of commitment. The root's always gonna sound like home bass. It's gonna sound great. The third is the note that makes the chord major or minor. So it's gonna be pretty, you know, it's gonna be a pretty bold statement. And then the fifth kind of sounds like it wants to resolve somewhere, right? Like think of the five chord, it wants to go back to the one. So we got. All right, that's if I put them all together. Now if I make a lick out of that. There we go. Side man cuts out right when you want it to be there. Okay, now I hit every chord tone. Right there in that one lick, I hit the fifth when I bend up. And I hit the third. And then I also hit the fifth again here. Okay, so that's fifth. just resolved on the five. Now watch, I'll go five to three, right? Sounds great. It's, those are all chord tones because the lick's going to sound good when you got the chord tones in there. So we can go... Simple. I started off my root, third, fifth, back to the root. Right? So D string, G string. So 
on this one I started up on a high string, this is my root here too, right? Think about the octaves. All ones. Okay, it's all the same note. You gotta think about where the thirds are, you got a third here. Right, so we'll do some higher higher string licks. Right, so I started with my root, went to my fifth, bent back into my fifth. Right, so we got. have that same chord in position two, right? Our A chord is right here, our A minor chord. Okay, so now we have our fifth, our root, and our third. That's why when Stevie Ray does the over the one chord, it sounds amazing because you're bending into chord tones. When you bend this note up, you're bending into your fifth, right? Because you get a fifth right here. Third and root. That's <laughs> because you hit the chord. You hit every note in the chord. Same with the lick like that, right? So you got nine, eight, ten, eight, ten. You're hitting every note of the chord. So, so the concept is to always just play or make sure that you're going to hit some of those chord tones, right? So if it's the, that's bending up on the 10th fret twice, and then again, 8th fret, 10th fret on the B, right? Or you got 9, right? So that's 9, 8, 10, 8, 10. Licks derived directly from that A minor chord. So, you can do licks like that where you're going like the third, root, and then you're sliding into the fifth. Right, so it's third, root, pull off, fifth, root, fifth, root. And then maybe you come back and resolve to the root. Right, so that's just five, eight, five, pull up to sound like nine, pull off, Right, now that's all over the one chord. Let's give some examples of, say, the four chord back to the one chord, or the interplay between the one and four chords. Okay, so the four chord is the D minor chord. So keep in mind that sometimes you don't always have to stick to the pentatonic scale, and this will teach you the modes. So if you're paying attention to the root, third, and fifth, of the D minor chord, you're gonna find out that one of the notes is not in the A minor pentatonic scale, and it's this one. But that's the third of the D minor chord, the third note, right? So we got root, fifth, third, okay? Now, that's really cool to keep that in mind because that'll teach you the modes anyways. If you learn how to play over chord changes, you're gonna know the modes. Right, but you get cool licks like that. It wouldn't work 
just out of the pentatonic scale. So it's really good to know your chords. Now, keep in mind, you got Ds in a couple spots. You got a D minor here. You got this D minor. And then you also have this D minor. All right, so like a D minor down here. Then you have this one. You have this one. All right, so this D minor would be in position three. This one's in position one. And then this one's in position four. Same thing, right? That note isn't in the pentatonic scale. Okay, but those are all part of the different D minor chords, okay? And that note is totally applicable over that chord. Because it's one of the most, it's the note that makes the chord major or minor, so you gotta use it, right? So let's look at what happens when you play over the D chord notes and then resolve back to our A chord. So remember, right here you got a D chord and an A chord. Some of the same notes, right? If you're here, right, you get the, the part of the D chord right here, so. Or you can bend this when you're in position one. If you bend here, you're bending into that D chord. Same with this one. All right? So, that's going to totally work, right? So, check this out. back to that A. Okay, so what did I do? I bent up on the high E string, bending into, right? That's the actual D note right there. I can bend it to right here, right? That's my fifth of the D chord. So think of you know, your A chord like this, it's the same, right? You got the root, third, fifth. Well, this is the same chord shape. So same rules apply. Root, third, fifth, root. So if I bend up, root, fifth of the D minor chord. My third's right here. And then root, right? So check it out. So actually, let me explain the leg. So we bent up on the eighth fret. Bent up on the eighth fret, so. So then that's gonna be five, six, five, and then I'm gonna bend up, pull off root of the D minor chord, and then. Same kind of thing, I'll play around in that same area because when I'm doing this, I'm still playing off the notes of the D chord, but those are also some of the same notes that are coming up in the A minor chord. So you're leading back in to the A minor chord. Right? Okay, so check it out. obvious right you can just right that that's simple enough so that's just sliding from right they they share this a so it's eight to ten and then back down to five and then that's the root of your D which is seventh fret G string, right? So that'll totally work, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
So I can hit that over the D or the A minor chords. Right? So let's stick with the start right here. Right? So that's the fifth. into this D minor here. So check that out. It's 12th fret. So I bend up 12, jump down 10, 13, 10, and then bend, bend up to get into here. Right? Now when I did that, check it out. I went. So I'm setting back up for that one. That's part of the A minor right here. Root. Back to the third of the A minor. Right? So I can go. Right, and that gets me into my D. So I'm hitting here, right, out of the D minor chord. Bending into this. And then I can go. And that gets me back into my, or I go. So if I go backwards, I got third. And then this note, when I bend it up a whole step, gets to my root of the A minor. Right, so we got Know, taking it to where you know you're not super concentrate you you know the target notes well enough that you can play licks like that quicker licks but you're still really paying attention to those target notes so it is possible to play you know quicker licks and and use them as an effect to create an excitement but still be hitting those chord tones now let's check it out when we go from like the four to the five chord you know that sort of thing and then it's the same same thing, right? You're just paying attention to that root third and the fifth over the E minor chord, then the root third and the fifth back to the D minor, root third and the fifth of the A minor. We're just sticking with those three notes because those are super important chord tones. So let's round it off with the five chord.
Okay, so the five chord is, uh, is the turnaround chord, right? So you go one, four, five, back to one. So you got. Okay, so the same thing applies with the D minor, right? Think of the chord that you're using, right? That's the D minor chord. You just take the exact same shape and move it up a whole step. But this time, a lot of the notes stick to the scale a little more. Like the third, for instance, is, is right out of position too, right? So it's the root. And then the only note that's a little different is the, the fifth doesn't stick to the pentatonic scale, so. Right? It would usually be. But that's all right, right? It's another one of those notes. You're one step closer to knowing the minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. But we have an E minor chord here. You also have an E minor chord here, right? Out of position four. So when you think about that, just position four, for instance, you got your five chord. You got your four chord, right? That D minor shape. And then you got your one chord, the A minor shape. So you really don't even have to move. Right, so check it out. Actually, let me switch. Let me switch my amps. Here we go. hey -ah, we got that one. Ugh. Gotta have distortion. I'm, I'm a distortion junkie. There's those guys that can play blues clean and tender and sweet. I'm, I'm not that dude. <laughs> I want aggressive beer bottles flying. I want some, some blues rock. All right, so here we go. There's my right, my root of my one chord. We got the four, four chord or the five chord. Okay, so so check this out. Let's go over the notes. Right, so we got our. Minor chord, right? Right. So the the five chord happens so quick in this particular style of the one four five that you don't really have to get crazy. But if you're just hitting, right. That can be enough, right? So that lick would be 14, 12. So you're hitting the root in the third. Over the four chord. Right, so you got that part of the D chord, right? And this part. Right, so you got your fifth root, and then you can go, right, so. And then back to the one chord, right? That's the third root. And then back to the four, right? So, right? And then back to the one. crazy and grab them big bends okay so also think about when you're in position one a D minor chords here too so you go and then you got your D chord back to the one chord 
And then remember you have the five chord here, so you could go, or you have the five chord in position two, right? So that's the third root. Back to the one of the A minor. Right, so that's how you would design licks around. Whew, man, it's freaking hot as Hades in here. Okay, <laughs> that's how you design licks around your chords, right? That's, spend a lot of time doing that. I promise you, if you spend your, and I talk a lot about this, but I'm really like wanting to hammer this in there, that if you play to the chords and not to the scale, you're gonna be way more melodic. And if you're already a flashy player looking to become more melodic, spend all your time really hammering those chord tones and focusing on that because then you'll start to become really melodic and then your flashy licks, I mean, it, it'll just be the icing on the cake. It'll be just like, a little kiss for you. Right on the top, a little cherry on top. <laughs> and if you're just starting out, it's the best way to start. start melody remember all the good blues greats were all singers they all sound melodic because they make their guitar like a vocal right they play out of that pentatonic scale but they phrase like a vocalist and that's what'll get you there if you don't sing learning to hit those chord tones all right so thank you for watching if you like what you see hit the like button also don't be afraid to share the videos far and wide with your friends and then you can also subscribe as well that would be amazing and if you want down below there's the link to do the series the three-part series that goes into this even more in depth and there's brettpapa.com if you want just the deep dive into all things guitar you guys are amazing we'll catch you next time